What's going on, Washington fans? Welcome to the JTFB YouTube channel where I talk all things Washington Commanders. If you don't know who I am, my name is Josh Taylor and I am a Bleacher Report contributor uh, covering all things for the Washington Commanders. And we know that this is the biggest offseason coming up, not only in the NFL draft, but also in free agency. And Washington is the number one team in salary cap heading into free agency. Um, according to Spot Track, it seems like over the cap and Spot Track's numbers are a little different. But it's somewhere between the very high 70 uh, million mark and the low 80 million uh, mark in salary cap. Regardless of what website you check out, Washington is the number one team in this offseason. Um, so there's a lot of different things to look at here. And I asked y'all what positions you want me to look at first. So I'm starting with the edge rushers in this video. And then the next one, I'll do the offensive lines. So don't worry, guys. It's coming. Uh, but as always, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, drop your comments and thoughts below in the video, and then also support the channel by signing up for the memberships, which is only $2.99 a month, which gives you exclusive perks, as well as in including some giveaways that I'll be doing, and I'll be giving away two jerseys at the NFL Draft this season coming up in Detroit, Michigan. I'll be there on the ground for all the reactions and um, all the picks going down for Washington. Can't wait for that. But free agency comes first. Free agency really helps you set up for the draft to see what you still need and, and helps you really get those best players available while also filling some holes in the draft. And taking a look at the free agent class, there are some guys I really like in a couple different positions. But like I said, I'm going to talk about the edge rushers for this year's free agency class because there's some big names out there. But I'm going to tell you who's going to be available, who's not available and really, I think the most likely scenarios. But I think the best thing to do first is to pull up the screen and take a look at really who Washington um, has on their roster, but then also giving you a look at who they're going to be missing moving forward. So if you look on the, the depth chart there, we have James Smith-Williams. Uh, we have F.A. Obata. Both are free agents, by the way. And then on the right D inside, you have Casey Tuhill, who is a free agent. Then you have K.J. Henry, who had a pretty... Pretty decent, I'll say, rookie season last year. Um, you know, out of Clemson, there were some plays I saw that I really liked from him. We kind of just got like a sample of KJ Henry. Um, I think KJ Henry is a good piece to have on this team. I think, you know, I, I like what I saw out of KJ. And then the guy behind him, Andre Jones Jr., is a guy that I liked a lot. Um, in training camp, we saw some stuff in preseason. I think those are both guys I would like to see more of, whether it's just more opportunities. Um, just really see what those two guys can do. But at the end of the day, you trade Montez Sweat, you trade Chase Young, you get these assets, you save your money. And that's you know pretty much why we're sitting where we are in this offseason. It's kind of why Adam Peters came over here because he said, look at all that draft capital. Look at all that salary cap they have there. I can really mold that team to be what I want it to be. So taking a look at it, you know, I think we have seen some good out of Casey Tuhill as well. And I think we've seen some really good out of F.A. Obata. James Smith Williams had a couple plays last year as well. Those are all three guys that, you know, it, it's it's more so of uh, can they be starters? And I don't think so. Maybe Casey Tuhill. Um, I would like to re-sign at least one of those guys. Maybe two. Because like I said, behind that, it's kind of rough. You've got... Jalen Harris, Joshua Pryor, like there's just not much, you know, depth included. So we had really seven guys um, on the ends last year. So say, you know, if we lose those three guys, I feel like we kind of need that, those little hill, those little holes that were already pretty big going into the offseason filled. And then you're probably going to lose those backup guys that got these starting roles because of the trades you made. Um, so I think, you know, they're going to do some evaluations. You know, once again, I think I like what I saw out of F.A. Obata. James Smith-Williams is a really fast guy offline. I think Casey Tuhill, I'm telling you, there's a couple plays I'm like, that going. Casey Tuhill can get to the quarterback. So like I said, I, in my realistic scenario, they re-sign one of these guys. It's going to be cheap. It's not going to be anything crazy. But these guys aren't even, like, really shown on PF, PFF's, like, top uh, edge free agents. Like, these are going to be cheap, cheap guys. You lose probably two. I think you you sign one, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, and then I think you draft one still. Um, whether it's a starter or maybe not. I'll talk more about draft prospects. Like I said, I'm going to be doing um, more in-depth like position 
uh, breakdowns for the draft and then also like player specific videos. So that's why you need to be a member because I'm going to be doing some member only videos to some of these guys. I've got all 22 to everybody. So it's going to be fun. We've got a couple, a couple months, but it's coming fast. So realistically, like I said, you're losing three guys. You need to fill those. Could KJ Henry start? Maybe. Um, I'll tell you where I think KJ Henry can have more of a role here in a second. So let's do this. Like I said, I'm using PFF's um, top like free agent rankings on their website. I actually really like this, and I think it's really fair. Do I agree with everything PFF says? No. Is it a great tool to use? In addition to other tools such as film, such as you know these fits of teams and stuff like that? Absolutely. So I'm looking at the edge rushers only, like I said, for this video. So I think you re-sign one guy, whether it's F.A. Obata, Two Hill, James Smith, Williams, whoever. You re-sign one of those guys. And like I said, I think you draft one too. Will it be a, a guy that's super high? Maybe, maybe not. Let's talk about it. Of course, Josh Allen is the number one edge rusher in free agency. Um but this is the this is the area here. These two guys, Josh Allen, Brian Burns, are the if only. You know, Josh Allen, only 26 and a half years old, had a crazy year this year. Outstanding year. The Jacksonville Jaguars are gonna franchise tag. Um, they absolutely have to franchise tag. Like I said, super young guy, very high upside. And same with Brian Burns right there. They're prop they're more than likely getting the same contract, same franchise tag. Right there with them, right at almost 26 years old. I love Brian Burns and I love Josh Allen. These two guys would be home run uh, additions to this team. That would be a long term franchise, just piece on that line. Like right there with John Allen and Deron Payne. Like these are long term guys. I don't think we'll trade John Allen, by the way. I don't think we'll trade Deron Payne. Dan Quinn wants his defense together. Um, but the thing is, you can't buy a house that's not for sale. That if I'm Jacksonville, I'm not letting Josh Allen test free agency. I'm hitting him with a tag. Same with Carolina. We're trying to rebuild. We're trying to, you know, build towards something. We have a 26 year old franchise edge rusher who's really good. Um, I think he's underrated, by the way. Um, I don't think he's talked about enough. We're franchise tagging him. I'm not letting this man leave the state. Either one of these two guys. So like I said, would they be great in Washington? Absolutely. Are we going to have a chance to get them? Absolutely not. Like I said, you cannot buy a house that's not for sale. People are like, oh, you can offer enough money. It doesn't matter. They are going to franchise tag him. They get nothing out of us paying Josh Allen more money. If we say, hey, Josh Allen, we will give you, instead of your $23 million um, tag will give you twenty six million a year, twenty seven million a year. Same with Brian Burns, something like that. Like probably more than what Chase Young. I mean, uh, not Chase Young. Probably more than what Montez Sweat just got. It doesn't matter because they're going to tag both of them, and they're not letting them leave. So these two, and I'm glad these two are right, right beside each other because these are the two guys I want to talk about. Daniil Hunter. He's t- freshly twenty nine years old. Um. Some people are turned away by that. Always getting, always hitting that that magic 30. Once you hit 30, that's where you start going down. But this guy, it's just, he's a production monster. I love Daniil Hunter. I think Daniil Hunter is a great option. I don't see Minnesota paying him. I don't think they really can afford it. I don't know what they're going to do with Kirk. Kirk's a free agent. Um, They've got some other pieces they're trying to keep in place. Daniil Hunter is more than likely leaving Minnesota. And PFF has him projected at a three-year, $21.67 million average per year, going to $40 million guaranteed and $65 million total. That's fine. I don't care that he's 29, almost 30, you know, by the time the season starts, whatever. I don't care. Daniil Hunter shows no slowing down so far. Absolutely none. Um, PFF credited him with 18 sacks last year. I looked at a couple other sites. Some had 16 and a half. I don't know why it's so different. Um, but still, let's go to Daniel Hunter's page and just see what he looked like. Run defense grade isn't the prettiest, um, but when you take a look at it, 51 solo tackles, that's third in the NFL. 16 assists, that's tied for 13 in the NFL. 18 sacks, that's tied for fourth. Four forced fumbles, tied for third in the NFL. 
Um, this guy had almost a thousand snaps last season. 80 total pressures, seven hits, 55 hurries. Are you kidding me? 50 stops. We haven't seen these kind of numbers from an edge rusher since like Ryan Kerrigan. Like I said, maybe his run defense grade isn't the sexiest, but guys, I sign me up for him all day long. I would gladly take Daniel Hunter. Um, six five two sixty three. I think he's been in Minnesota his whole career. Third round selection, eighty eight overall. Um, yeah, sign me up. I don't care how old he is. Like I said, the numbers have not slowed down. Um, his whole career. If you really want to see the numbers, um, it's like every year they get better. Maybe his run defense was the worst that he's had last year. But outside of that, like I said, guys, 18 sacks, 12 the year before that. I like, give me that all day long. 55 hurries, seven hits. That's crazy. Um, yeah. And he's just, he's a sure tackler too. Um, we need that. And it's going to be really hard to get a premier edge rusher in free agency. And what do you, what is what is premier? A high production, high snap count guy. I think Daniel Hunter is going to be the number one available when it's in that category. Like I said, the Brian Burns aren't going to be available. The Josh Allens are not going to be available. You're going to have to get someone like Daniel Hunter in there. Um, so let's go back. Like I said, sign me up for Daniel Hunter seven days of the week. I'm not worried about how old he is. It maybe if he had like some kind of a slump this year and he, you know, didn't get 18 sacks. Like if he got like five or six, I'm like, well, maybe not. 18 sacks. Like I said, some other websites have 16 and a half, 17, whatever. Double digit sacks. And it's not like 10. <laughs> it's a good amount. Um, so yes, I'm all in on Daniel Hunter. If that's where you want to throw, um, like I said, 21 and a half, almost 22 million per year. That's not bad for a guy that produces at that level. Um, sign me up. Now, what's the option after him? This is a guy I've been talking about a lot too. This is a guy I'm a big fan of. That's Bryce Huff straight out of Mobile, Alabama. I was hoping he was at the Senior Bowl just hanging out, but he wasn't. I was trying to talk to him. Tell him to come to Washington. Bryce Huff. Now, this is a tough one. This is a tricky one. I'm going to tell you why. And he is young, only almost 26 years old. The thing with the Jets is they had just so many edge rushers. Their D-line is so deep. They just they have no reason to pay Bryce Huff. They have no reason to pay Carl Lawson. Like they have Jermaine Johnson. They got a lot of guys. It was a deep, it was a deep rotation. But the thing with Bryce Huff is he only played 481 snaps last year. He was a rotational guy. And if you read this little description they have below him, it says Huff has set out to prove that he uh, that his absurd pass rushing efficiency in 2022 wasn't an uh, aberration. It, uh, I can't read this small print. And he did just that in 2023 with a crazy high pass rushing win rate once again. Still, there's a reason the team that developed the former undrafted free agent and saw him every day didn't like to deploy him against the run and hasn't made much of an effort on an extension. This will be nuanced uh, negotiation for a designated pass rusher type. Fortunately, that's the richest facet in Excel for an edge defender, former Baltimore Raven and Chicago Bears pass rusher specialist. Uh, Pernell McVie uh, comes to mind as a comparable player, as does Huff's current teammate, Carl Lawson. Um, so the thing with Bryce Huff is he was like a rotational just pass rushing specialist. But he had a really good season. He had a really good production season too. In the snaps that he had as an undrafted guy, like I said, he produced though. 10 sacks for a guy that only had 440 whatever snaps it was. 67 total pressures, 12 hits, 45 hurries, 16 stops. He produced. He did what he had to do. Now, the thing that, once again, they're just not too keen on is, can he be an every down guy? I don't know. We haven't seen it yet. 
Are you going to trust him out there as an every down guy against the run? I don't know. Maybe it's worth taking a fly out. And, and here's my thought process with this. If you sign Bryce Huff, you can rotate him with KJ Henry. Let him and KJ Henry rotate in. Like I said, I want to see more KJ. If you sign Bryce Huff, I know it's 16.67 mil per year average is what they're projecting. It's still not crazy. But do you want him to be an every down guy? Yeah, you would love that. But it's not the Daniil Hunter contract, 22 almost. So, you know, it's a it's a pretty favorable contract for a guy who, like I said, produces and is super young. Now, he says that he can play every down. He said he wants to, like, show that. We'll have to see. But that that's just the, there's a risk-reward to this. He's a lower um, option when it comes to money. The upside's there, but there is some risk. Can he stop the run? Can he play every down? I don't know. But if not, like I said, you can rotate him with KJ Henry. But then that kind of shows your hand. Like, are you playing run? You're playing pass? Like, if, if KJ Henry's on the, the field, like, you're kind of expecting run. If Bryce Huff is on the field, you're getting to the quarterback. So I would like to see him develop that side to him a little bit more, not just be like this, you know, outside linebacker kind of pass rushing esque guy. And, you know, they, they talked about our defense. They talked about how they just want, like, high-motor guys, physical guys. And I think Bryce Huff fits that. And they also talked about how, it, like, it doesn't matter, 3-4, three, 4-3. Four, four, three. You know, Joe Witt um, in his press conference said, like, it don't matter. Everyone plays everything. It doesn't matter what your base is. Everyone runs everything. You just have to be a fast, physical guy who creates plays, gets turnovers, gets to the quarterback. Like, we want people to hate playing against us. So, you know, is it going to be a nuanced negotiation? Yeah, because you don't know what you're getting out of the run game with him. Um, oh, yeah, and by the way, Adam Schefter just tweeted to remind us all that starting Tuesday and lasting through Tuesday, March 5th, NFL teams can designate franchise or transition players, tag candidates, include, and he gives the list. And, of course, you know, you have the um, – Daniel Hunter could get the tag, too. Brian Burns likely to get the tag. Josh Allen likely to get the tag. So Daniel Hunter might get tagged too. But that's still a pretty pricey tag for Minnesota. I still think there's a chance Daniel Hunter could uh, hit the market. But then after Bryce Huff, what do you have? You have Chase Young. He's not coming back. Jonathan uh, Grenard is a guy that um, I've kind of looked into too because, you know, too, too, looked into as well. Uh, because when you watch these Texans games, you know, I, I think um, – I think Jonathan had a pretty good year. I think he had a I think he had a good year under D'Amico Ryan's, you know, former defensive guy, defensive head coach. Like it's just kind of expected the defense overall to take a step. And it did. Um, still only 26 and a half years old. Um, I think Jonathan had a good year. And you're looking at three year 15.75 million per year as an option, 40. 47 and a quarter mil total, about 31 and three quarter guarantee. That's not bad. Um, so outside of Daniel Hunter, Bryce Huff, I think Jonathan Grenard is a guy that no one's talking about. And once again, look at the little description there. Uh, Grenard made an absolute most out of his contract year under tutelage of D'Amico Ryans and company, and he's been producing as a pass rusher and run defender with his 9.3% run stop rate ranking eighth among qualifying edge defenders. Uh, Grenard wins against the run because of a good first step, strong diagnosing skills, and a solid ability to set the edge and avoid getting washed out to the point of attack. As a pass rusher, while he doesn't have the deepest arsenal of moves, he is good enough athlete to rack up, clean up, and pursue pressures if teammates chase quarterbacks his way, and he rarely gives up reps until the whistle blows. I mean, geez, that's... Oh, yeah, so Kirk Cousins can't get tagged either. They just said, I forgot that. He can't get tagged. So they either have to pay him or someone else's. Um, but anyways, in my opinion, like someone like that fits really us. You have... You know, John Allen getting to the quarterback. You have Deron Payne getting to the quarterback, and whoever's going to be on the other side, probably a you know draft pick or whoever, Kaja Henry, whatever they decide to do. So Jonathan can get to the quarterback, 
But when he has Allen and he has Payne also getting to the quarterback and kind of bringing things to him, he just doesn't let the big plays get by. That's what I really like. That's things that we saw with Chase Young a lot. And, yeah, I mean, there was a couple of times where he flashed some good things, you know, getting to the quarterback and with the 49ers, like in the Super Bowl. But then you see these plays where it's like big players are going right by him. He's getting washed out of the play. That's one thing that he does not do. And I think that's big. Could he be a 15 sack season guy? Maybe not. But he's really containing things. Um, and he's doing a good job at stopping the run on the way to the quarterback. Last season, he had 14 sacks. Jesus. So, yeah, he can get 15. 24 hurries, 10 hits, 48 total pressures. Um, yeah, that shout out to D'Amico Ryans. Um, because that's definitely his best season that he had 14 sacks last year. Dang, I thought he had like 10, he had 14. So, yeah, sign me up for this guy, man. 6'3, 263. Um, third round pick. Once again, he's not that old. Um, yeah, I'll take that all day long. Whoops, wrong page. Um, yeah. So there's a couple options here when it comes to the edge defenders. Then you start getting into the older veteran guys, the Jadavian Clownies, the Darius Smith. Josh Duche is another one of those weird ones, kind of like Bryce Huff. I don't know. I was kind of in on the Uche drain a little bit because he's young. There's some upside there to him. He would be really cheap. Um, but it's just he's like a third down guy. Like you're doing a five, two package. You put Uche in. Like, I just don't trust him on the outside. Once again, like Bryce Huff, it's a question mark. Can he be that guy? Maybe, probably he might be able to, there's a chance. Josh Uche. I don't see him being that guy. Leonard Floyd, not too bad. Andrew Van Ginkle. Um, I think Miami would like to get Van Ginkle back. He had a really good year last year. Um, I don't see him hitting it. Uh, didn't he go all tree? These are just like low, Low guys for me, like low floor guys. Not much. Clay's Campbell, um, almost retired. Um, if he isn't going to already, Brandon Graham, same. Don't know. Like Carl Lawson, no. AJ Epineza, maybe is like one that I'm kind, like I would kind of be curious in because he had a pretty good season. Like finally, um, this past year. Derek Barnett, Taekwon Lewis, Kyle Van Noy. Like outside of that, Marcus Davenport. I'm not really interested in any of these guys. I feel like it's got to be someone that, you know, definitely like a starter. We don't need like to sign like another depth guy. Maybe, maybe one, but like I said, you might as well just resign one guy that you have or two and lose one. Um, so for me, like it's three guys, Jonathan Grenard, Bryce Huff, Daniel Hunter. Will they tag him? Maybe. Uh, PFF doesn't think they will. Um, it really, honestly, it kind of depends on the Kirk situation, depending on how much they pay. Um, but I think Daniel Hunter's going to test free agency. And I, once again, I'd be fine offering a little bit more than 21.67. If it's like 22, 22 and a half, whatever, that's fine. Like he's a high production guy. Pay you. And people, and I heard this a lot. People are like, well, why didn't you pay Montez? Why didn't you pay Chase Young? Because look, first off, we got the draft picks. Big. A second and a third. Comp third, but still. Pick. Um, and then just at the time, like it, it just, you, you wanted as much money as possible going through this transition from GMs, you know, with Adam Peters and everything, you, the chances of you getting a good GM with, you know, your salary cap in, in the dumpster, we wanted the top guy and we got the top guy. Um, and we want him to be able to do what he wants to do. You don't want to pay, you know, Montez what the contract that the bears paid him, which is pretty hefty. It's not like he's bad. I don't think I don't think he's bad. I think it was another thing if he just needed a change of uh, scenery. Um, but in my opinion, those are like the three guys to watch. Do I have a preference of one? I mean, man, if they can honestly, I mean, I think Daniel Hunter, because you're you're paying for their production. Like it's every year he does that. Um, like I said, Bryce Huff, if he can be an every down guy, sign me up. If not, you've got to figure out what you're going to do. Is that does that mean him and KJ Henry are going to rotate that side? Then maybe, and that's fine too. But you're also paying him almost 17 mil a year. Um, and then Jonathan Kennard, almost 16 mil a year. 
only 26 and a half years old. Um, more reliable. I, I I think he's more of like the safer options, but still, like you saw, I proved me wrong. 14 sacks last year, high production, getting to the quarterback. Whether, um, you know, like I said, like they said, he does. He might not have the deepest arsenal of pass rushing moves, but he gets the numbers. And when things are washed to him, he cleans it up. He doesn't let big runs go past him. He doesn't let these mobile quarterbacks run past him. He cleans up. He does the dirty work. I like that. I think he's a super underrated option. Matter of fact, I'm gonna watch some more tape this the, from this year tonight <laughs> just to see what exactly D'Amico Ryan's is cooking up with this guy. Maybe I'll do a video on just him. Maybe I'll do a video um, like doing some uh, film breakdown, Bryce Huff, Daniel Hunter, whatever. We've got a lot of stuff to get you free agency wise though, and I want to try to get through all of it as much as possible. So that's my thoughts. Um, obviously, Brian Burns and Josh Allen would be perfect. But house is not going to be for sale. Um, so I think you're left with three like legit options, and it's those guys: Daniel Hunter, Bryce Huff, Jonathan Grog. That's it. Um, and like I said, it's got to be starters. Now, does that mean you still have the option to draft a guy? Whoops, I got rid of myself instead. Um, does that mean that you have the option still to draft a guy? I think you still need to, even if you sign one, like I said, it really depends who you sign. Um, if it's Bryce Huff, you could run KJ Henry with them. If it is Daniel Hunter, it depends how the board falls. You know, if you're there in that second pick, Darius Robinson, Chop Robinson, Adisa Isaac, you've got some high picks. And would it be worth going like another depth guy, like getting one in the fourth or fifth? Or do you want that? Like guy who like you're expecting to start like a Darius Robinson, Chop Robinson, a Decisive. Maybe. I, there's just we have a lot of things to figure out. <laughs> we have a lot of holes on this team. Um, but signing one, in my opinion, is a big need. Like I, I, I still want a vet on the edge. Whether it is one of those three guys, like I, I whoever it is, I think you need some kind of vet leadership on the edge. You know, we saw, like I said, this year you had Case Duhill, Rafael Bada, James Smith Williams. It was just in KJ Henry, a little bit of Andre Jones, a um, little bit of Joshua Pryor, not a lot. He's much like special teams. Um, but you, you, you just saw, like, I know these are backup guys. We kind of just expected that second half of the season after the trade deadline. Like, all right, these are just the backups. They're starters now, though. But still, like, let's see what they got. Um, and I, like I said, it depends if maybe they keep two. If they only keep one, then you're definitely signing one and drafting one. But if you if you do two, maybe you can get away with just signing one big one and then just letting KJ Henry, you know, start and see what you got in him. Because like I said, you saw some good things from him. Um, so that's my thoughts. Let me know what y'all think. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Like I said, hit that subscribe button and like as always, and then drop your comments below. I'll be doing the offensive line next. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, I've already looked at the tackles, center options, guard options. Uh, I've got everything ready to go. So I'll be dropping that one sooner rather than later. Uh, probably this week coming up. I know I have a video with Bleach Report on Tuesday that I always upload to the channel as well. So stay tuned on that. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You'll see um, Tuesday afternoon. I forgot what time it is. I think it's like 1. But tune in on the Bleach Report app and then come over to the channel um, if you miss out. So I will see you all next time here on the JTFB channel. As always, peace.